in the Dhammachaka Sutta that we chanted last night. After Anya Kondanya entered the stream and became a Sodhapana, Lord Buddha declared Anya Kondanya knows, seeing to himself, Nibbana. And then Davis rejoiced. The wheel of Dharma had been set in motion in the world. The Davis in the realm of the four kings rejoiced. And then Davis in Tartan for heaven. And Davis in to see the heaven. Yama Davis. Nimanarati Devas, Paranimita, Vasavati Devas, and Brahmakhaika Devas. Yes, they were reading the suits of what Brahm didn't know. Similarly, that bhikkhu with the psychic powers visited Devas in each of these realms. Apparently the Davis have a more subtle body than the human body and they experience a more pleasure in their body consistently, rapture, relaxation, ease, well-being and that's as a result of merits that have been made. When you wake up early in the morning and you feel a bit tired and you feel a bit grumpy and you want to sleep a bit more, sometimes it's hard to imagine that apparently Davis pray to be reborn as humans when there's Buddhist teachings in the world. Because it's precisely this spectrum of pleasant, neutral and unpleasant feelings that we experience, which is our great opportunity to sharpen our mindfulness and wisdom and learn about the truth of conditioned phenomena. Apparently the Davids can practice Samatha. They can recollect the Buddha, Dharma, Sangha. They can practice loving kindness. Apparently, it's more difficult to develop insight. In the Eightfold Path, right view comes first. A wise context within which to see the world. It's very helpful when we contemplate these things that basically we're very fortunate and our dukkha is our special opportunity. Something very valuable to learn from. Another downside of the Deva realm. For many Devas, apparently, they. You know what it's like when you're going through a happy period. When you're on holidays, perhaps. And you notice how quickly time goes by. All of a sudden, you have to go back to work. So the Devas in experiencing more pleasure and more happiness can tend to be a little bit heedless, neglect to build merits. And so after a very long life in the labor realm, the merits that caused the neighbors to be born there are exhausted 
the deva has to fall to a lower realm. I think some devas do make merits, Bill Barney, but apparently a large percentage become heedless. They are lost in the pleasure. So I think you probably all know what it's like to spend all of your wage and then to max your credit card as well. All of a sudden, you can't go on holiday. You have to go back to work. So apparently, often neighbors, after experiencing a great deal of pleasure, many neighbors then have a difficult subsequent birth. We understand that we've all been making lots of good karma and lots of bad karma. If you have a life where you cash in a lot of the good karma and experience, mostly pleasure, the next files coming up in the in-tray, those unfortunate karmas which are going to manifest in Dukkha. Buddha's teachings are described as leading to heaven and beyond. Because uh, heaven isn't safe. It's a break, it's like having a break. that life ceases and if you've cashed in all of your merit then there's difficult karmas to work with next because even one sutta where the Buddha says it's not uncommon for devas to fall from the deva realm and be reborn in the hell. That's pretty scary. Apparently what happens is Mindfulness gets weak, delighting in pleasure, experiencing mostly happiness and not seeing much sickness, not seeing much death, not experiencing much separation from the loved, becoming lazy. And then apparently as the neighbors die, they experience a great deal of pain in their bodies, often for the first time, hundreds of thousands of years of no pain in the body. And then all of a sudden, terrible pain. And apparently the neighbors' friends often reject them as they're dying because they get a bad smell, they don't look nice. Devas have become so accustomed to beautiful sights, beautiful smells, beautiful sounds, beautiful touches, and so every now and then, after long intervals, one Deva, the radiance fades, they start to feel pain, cry out, and the other Devas can't stand it. And then you run away and delight in daily pleasure and reject their friends. And so as well as the pain and the grief of the separation from the pleasure and the beauty that they enjoyed as that sense of being alone. So many David's minds become depressed at the moment of death. And they fall to a lower realm. So we can see that it's not a lasting refuge to be reborn in heaven. Apparently, if one is born in the Tushita realms, there are many more wise beings and more beings, more devas practicing. That's four heavens up. Apparently it's not easy to be born in Dushita heaven. One needs truly vast amounts of merit and great faith. But 
as I was saying, apparently many neighbors actually are envious of the human opportunity and pray to be reborn in the human realm. When the time when Buddha Dharma is present, it's precisely this cultivating mindfulness with pleasant mind states, neutral mind states, unpleasant mind states, pleasant, neutral, and unpleasant mental feeling. mindfulness, practicing mindfulness with neutral, pleasant and unpleasant physical feelings has many benefits. One benefit being that mindfulness gets stronger, this very special quality. Ajahn Sumedho says mindfulness is a path to the deathless. abbreviation of what the Buddha says, these four foundations of mindfulness lead to the deathless, merge in the deathless. So mindfulness then is a very powerful and special quality. And it gets sharper when it has to be trained with the unpleasant. So many monks and nuns take on extra practices, getting up extra early, going without sleep once a week, walking very long hours of meditation, sitting with painful feelings for longer periods. They actually take on willingly embrace working with what is called Dukkha Vedana. Precisely because it makes mindfulness sharp. And when mindfulness is sharp, that which is known as Dukkha isn't Dukkha. That which knows suffering isn't suffering. A sense of having a refuge develops in the mind. So that's what the neighbors can be envious of. Apparently, as a mental quality, if one has divine eye, mindfulness is like clear light. People who have good mindfulness if a neighbor is looking at you, they'll see a quality of clear light around you. And if people aren't very mindful, there's a sense of cloudy, fuzzy dullness. And so the neighbors know who's practicing well. If you develop some samadhi, apparently, your aura becomes bright, white. But if you develop samadhi and very clear mindfulness, your aura becomes like clear light. And so we can experience that when meditation goes well, a sense of clarity and actually feel clarity. So for those with eyes for seeing, they can see the clarity as well. Beings who are prone to becoming angry. Apparently their auras develop a kind of a grey quality and if they're during the time they're very angry, even black. And the beings who experience a lot of lust, a lot of passion, during the time that the passion is strong, the aura becomes red. mindfulness and the mind doesn't get completely overcome with these killings are quality of light and clarity. So we all have a skill I think, myself included, for feeling sorry for ourselves when things are difficult. And then in the Tibetan tradition they talk about different forms of laziness and they actually talk about dejection as a form of laziness because during the time that we're despondent or depressed or feeling sorry for ourselves we don't put forth much effort. So they describe this as a type of laziness. So 
was very valuable then to remember the samsaric perspective. I mean, it's difficult sometimes, isn't it? If you wake up and you feel dumb and you feel grumpy, and it seems so bad. And we can't see a billion or more beings in hell below. Billions of beings as ghosts. And all these thousands of millions of beings with much more suffering than this. And so we forget that. And we can't see that bearing with with determination and with the right view is accumulating merits brightening the heart and cultivating very special spiritual qualities that will lead you to complete liberation this is why the power of faith first of the five powers and aspects of right view, first factor of the eightfold path, very helpful to keep getting us on our cushion and using the precious opportunity that we have. Dukkha, a noble truth. is when we see it, that we begin to get interested in knowing how not to do it. Start becoming an adult, start becoming more mature, and start getting really interested in learning to take responsibility, get sick of blaming others, get sick of blaming the world, blaming anything, but our own deluded craving. It's a relief for people with spiritual qualities. It's actually a relief to discover that we're doing it ourselves and we can learn not to do it. But you're not going to learn that only from looking at pleasant feelings. So I'm just wishing to affirm here that working with the sleepiness, working with the shoulder pain, the knee pain, the back pain, it's all very valuable. Maintaining consistent sati, samma sati, gives rise to samma samati. It won't just be unpleasant feelings, bearing, wasting, patiently enduring, There'll be rapture, there'll be tranquility, there'll be serenity, there'll be bliss for periods of time. Skilled meditators experience a lot of that, a lot of rapture, a lot of tranquility, a lot of serenity. But that's the result of effort. Try not to grasp that either. 
interesting thing about these small blissful mind states. If you just apply the effort consistently, you'll experience them more and more. And as soon as you really, really, really want them, they don't come. And this is a great teacher as well. You can see for yourself how helpful craving is. Because a lot of craving, it completely obstructs tranquility. If you apply mindfulness consistently, contemplate wisely, keep bringing the awareness back within the parameters of the body in the present moment, tranquility arises. Serenity deepens, the rapture arises. So being willing to work with all of our feelings and all of our mind states, maintaining a consistency of mindfulness that simply knows these things as they are. Understanding that this will lead to the deathless, merging the deathless. Breathing in, knowing the beginning, middle, and end of an in-breath. Breathing out, knowing the beginning, middle, and end of the out-breath. And using Buddha, synonymous with being awake, aware, radiant, affirming your potential to be mindful and wise and peaceful. Breathing in Buddha, breathing out Dhamma, 